Now, the story of Rwanda's genocide has, of course, been told around the world many times, and justifiably so. But equally remarkable has been the story of Rwanda's economic revival, a revival that has seen economic growth averaging between 7 and 8 percent since 2003. Now, that has just allowed Rwanda to get back to where it was, to pre-1994, before the genocide. There are still an awful number of challenges that Rwanda faces. And to tell us more, and to take us through the story that has been Rwanda, we're joined by the architect of our Rwanda's miracle, His Excellency Paul Kagame. Mr. President, thank you for your time. Pleasure. Welcome. As an African journalist, I've always often wondered what it must have felt like for you when you came in and saw the devastation that was around Rwanda, uh, coming up to Kigali and seeing the mayhem. And then when you look around now, the complete difference, the economic progress that you have been making, when you look, do you get the sense that are you, you, you're there? Have we arrived? Not yet. Uh, we still have a lot to do. Uh, but we have come a long way. Uh, as you rightly said, the story is that of uh, devastation at the beginning. Uh, total devastation, if you will, if you look at 18 years ago. And where we are today uh, is a different story. It has been that of uh, uh, real resilience of Rwandans. And, and being able to overcome this devastation and rebuilding uh, uh, lives, uh, Rwandans rebuilding their own lives and rebuilding their country, so to speak, building uh, a new Rwanda, a new nation altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we are, but there is still a lot to do. Okay. So let's talk about uh, some of the efforts that you've been putting in. I think everybody uh, here is about Rwanda's remarkable progress. So we speak about uh, the ranking of Rwanda ahead of bigger East African economies on, do, on the Doing Business Report of the World Bank, uh, sitting at number three. But in terms of getting investors to come in, what else could you be doing to try to get investors to look more at Rwanda than they are doing now? We still have to do a lot in the area of uh, changing the perception, right. uh, which uh, Rwanda is affected by, but this is a common thing for the rest of the continent. Sure. So we have to deal with that. We have to be seen to be doing what is right and what attracts investments and what really convinces people that uh, the stability is there to stay and, and we are doing our best in that area. Mm -hmm. The second is uh, to invest in uh, infrastructure. We have to build and we are trying to build uh, a modern infrastructure that uh, supports uh, uh, investments, supports uh, private business and other activities to happen including activities even of government in yeah. delivering its services to its people and so on and so forth. All, all of these are things that we still need to do and then investing uh, in our people right. in education and making sure that uh, this country of ours and our people uh, uh, are healthy, the, you know. So social and economic transformation has to be built on these key pillars that uh, we have to look at. Yeah. So in terms of uh, those incentives that you are looking at, are there any that you're planning that perhaps we can share with us and our audience across Africa? Well, if you look at wh wh where we have been, as, as I said, if you look at... Um, in the area of building institutions, uh, public and right. private institutions that are firm on the ground and that give reassurance to people and enable people to deliver services as, as the case should be. This is one area that uh, we, we have really made good progress in. Mm -hmm. and even in terms of infrastructure, we, we've laid, uh, been laying infrastructure, if you look at the road infrastructure, if you look at uh, telecom infrastructure. We've been investing in um, fiber optic networks to you know, provide stable and, and fast internet services and you know this is all work in progress but it's good progress given the short uh, time we have been able to do that so yeah. and we do that from within our sources and, and from other sources uh, coming 
through foreign aid, uh, direct investment sure. uh, and other uh, sources as well. Um, even across Africa, mm. there has been um, um, quite significant flow of investment from yeah. within Africa itself to Rwanda uh, 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 as well as from outside. One of the challenges that has been coming, and people have been speaking about this quite a lot, is how do you get the locals to be part of the growth story? So it's not just the headline numbers that we're talking about, you know, 7 8%. Where and how do we include the majority of Rwandans in the Rwandan economy? Oh, that's, that's uh, the whole, that's the real most important factor of the story. And in fact, if you look at um, the story of our growth, uh, it hinges on, on key areas that uh, involve uh, our people. In fact, it has seen significant growth in the area of agriculture. Right. We have registered 6.5% uh, plus uh, growth in the area of agriculture for the last say, five to seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, and and in ag as long as agriculture I is growing like this, and we, we made sure that it certainly uh, comes and covers uh, a wider part of our country and the population. Right. So, that means the growth is really significantly uh, hinged on uh, what the population is able to do and also uh, benefit from. Mm -hmm. The other is the area of uh, services uh, and also uh, industry. We have seen this grow significantly, services growing to above 8 yeah. percent, industry over 11 percent. And this has been consistent. And of course, this involves, it, yeah. it covers employment, it gives, you know, uh, opportunity to, to a wide uh, section of our population. So this is important. It's not just numbers that are impressive. It's yeah. the real story behind these numbers. What is the solution, though? Is it to insist that every company that comes into Rwanda has uh, a component or a percentage that is devoted to Rwanda's. I mean, there have been various experiments tried around Africa. I mean, we talk about the case of Zimbabwe where they insist on 51%. Kenya has been talking about ensuring and making it into law that there's inclusion in South Africa. We've got the miners who are compelled to at least have 26%. What is Rwanda's approach to that? Our view on that is not to so much look in the way of trying to legislate this right. or that. And, and in fact, we've wanted it to remain open okay. and and in many cases common sense applies and, and works this way let me t say what I mean sure. it's a question of telling the story the way it must be told and, and mobilizing people and having a, a conversation with the people that persuades them for example every investor who comes here you will find maybe over five for every ten um, we'll not just be looking at investing in Rwanda, you know, short time and leaving. Right. These are people who want to invest yeah. and stay and, yeah. and benefit from their the returns of investments. But also, this in a way has benefits to the people in this place. And, and for stability to happen uh, for these investments, Reasonable people yeah. understand that the local population, the yeah. people in yeah. the country, they really have to buy in and be part of any process that benefits them as well as they yeah. benefit. So nationalization is not the answer? No, it's, it's not. Uh, I haven't seen it that way. And, and uh, I, I, I believe um, our story tells the truth about yeah. what needs to happen. And we haven't been insisting on this yet. We have registered. Uh, this uh, growth uh, and which growth has also uh, reflected the benefits uh, of our people yeah. without you know going that route we haven't gone that route we've been we haven't been thinking about that route yeah. but we try to communicate we come out and show uh, practically yeah. that people would freely come and do things here and, and at the same time 
benefit as well as uh, benefit to the country as well. Yeah. But I wanted to come back to the issue of uh, Rwanda's, uh, the sustainability of the growth rates that we have seen so far. So 7 to 8%, and I think we're looking at about 8.6% uh, for, for last year. Mm -hmm. Now, what measures are you taking to ensure that that growth continued, continues perhaps for the next uh, a decade or so? I know there's the, vision, uh, tw the Rwanda Vision 2020 program. You see, right from the start, what we did, other than you know, identifying what really we need to do uh, to meet our different challenges, some of which even at the beginning look insurmountable, it has been to communicate with our people sure. and make sure that everyone feels they are part of this process. Mm -hmm. Everyone has what to bring uh, to this process for it to work. Uh, so there has to be buying right from the beginning. Second, and, and this comes along with that, it has been to say, well, you expect challenges. There are going to be challenges. Mm. Uh, and let's not hold anybody else responsible for, for that or, sure. or play victim. Or Let's just take the bull by its horns. Let's be the ones to be at the forefront there fighting for ourselves. Sure. As well as we expect and try to invite uh, others to come and play uh, and support what we are doing for their benefit as well as we benefit from that. Sure. And we do that by making clear policies, policies that are, are, are really favorable and, and work to resolve or, or, or help us to meet these challenges sure. uh, and, and create institutions that are yeah. going to deliver on this. Yeah. Uh, 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 and one very important thing that has to uh, be in all of this is also uh, creating a sense of predictability. Right. How predictable mm. is the situation mm. that mm. We, we are doing all of this? Uh, so, and, and we've seen in all of this, whether it is business, whether it is uh, uh, public service, uh, the level of confidence matters. Mm. Uh, in ourselves, in what we are doing, but also in making sure that the others have confidence in us that right. what we are trying to do, what we say we are going to do, is what we are going to do. Right. So we make sure that in every activity, this element is there. It involves Rwandans, it has brought in, you know, Rwandans to buy in and believe in what they are doing, right. but also to, to reflect that we are reliable people, we are people we can, that others can do business with, and, and each one knows what to expect, and we stick to that. And then, of course, security, uh, we have created an environment of uh, rule of law, uh, it gives a sense of security of people right. and what they have invested in Rwanda. Yeah. Now, we've seen African growth, of course, impacted by the European crisis, the difficulties that we've seen in the U.S., as well as now China slowing down a little bit. What sort of growth rates are you looking at for 2012, 2013, given the impact of these things that perhaps many people had infected into their growth models? In fact, we, we, we have been pleasantly surprised by the continued progress our country makes and the, the growth of our economy, uh, even, f even if we are living in a, 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 in a world now at this time of a lot of uncertainties and yeah. instability. In fact, uh, uh, to try and be, uh, I mean, not create too much expectation, but sure. we have seen indications that we are our economy this year is not grow, going to go below 7.7 percent. But there are other indications that uh, point I I in the direction of even higher than that. Right. So we have, have, have even lo looking at, even if you started with 2008, when all these global uh, economic programs started, yeah. We have continued to register growth, well above uh, six percent. Uh, so it, we 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 are trying to do the best we can do here and try and deal with the rest that affects us from outside the best way we can. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, but Charity has said begins at home. We try to 
you know, make sure that everything is done right uh, within our means, in our own country, and everybody is in the process, and then we build from there. So once we get things uh, done properly in our country, the rest will follow. Indeed. We're talking to President Paul Kagame, and we're talking to him about the economic miracle that many say has been Rwanda. When we come back after the break, we're going to take him into the regional level and also the Pan-African level, where we talk about perhaps what Africa can do to try and maximize the advantage and the interest that we have seen coming onto the continent from the international community.